I'm here today on the plinking range and all around me there's all sorts of refuse, cool objects that have been shot up and it's immediately obvious even for those of you that only shoot 22 long rifle or whatever that they can make quite a mess. Uh, they really tear things up. And so it really kind of makes you wonder what can your eye protection actually do. Now in the case of sunglasses or regular glasses, supposedly they can't do much. But today we're going to see exactly how bulletproof uh, these are. Now these aren't intended, you know, supposedly to take a bullet straight into your eye or whatever. It's supposed to be for uh, all kinds of debris, maybe a ricochet, things like that. Uh, but we're just going to test out some different rounds and see how they perform against these. We have these uh, inserts for a uh, a browning set of shooting glasses that I would have liked to like, but uh, they were, and it, I love the lenses. Uh, these things are great. Um, I think it came with uh, this uh, kind of rose one, amber, and then there was a yellow. And uh, it all came in this nifty little case with different compartments inside it. I'm going to keep the bag because the bag is great. Uh, the lenses will be sacrificed though because the frames were garbage. They were really, really weak. Um, I think I broke them just putting them on and off my head. Well, let's talk about the big guns that we're going to have for today's test. If any of you are snickering right now, it's because you've had one of these as a kid. This is a Crossman uh, Power Master. And I'm just going to be shooting regular copper-plated BBs out of this thing. And I'm going to be using the, uh, the high magnification scope here. In addition to the guns and targets, today we will be using a chronograph just to see what kind of speeds we're dealing with. And mostly, I know what kind of ballistics I have on my rounds, but um, I do need this for dealing with the BBs. I don't exactly know what kind of speeds they'll be doing. So we should get a pretty good idea. The, uh, the chronograph is set 10 feet out from the bench. And then it's probably another, oh, I don't know, 10 yards out to the, uh, the berm there. So we're going to encounter a little bit of slowdown, but mostly this should be pretty well right on. We will also be using this bad boy, but before you get too excited, yeah, we're shooting 22s today. Right now I have my CMMG conversion in there uh, with the 26 round 22 magazine and uh, got the little Bushnell TRS 25 mounted on top. At this range it'll be a little bit weird to figure out uh, what kind of drop I'm getting but this will be booking by the time it hits the target. I'm curious to see if the 22 LR is gonna just breeze right through. Uh, I'm not really sure that it's going to, we'll see. But just in case, I do have my Taurus OSS in 9mm. I've got some uh, hand load hollow points here. And that should dump plenty of energy into anything that I pointed at. I don't think we're going to have to go beyond this, but if we do, I do have some 223 rounds, and we can uh, put those through the AR 15. All right, let's get this thing started. And I'm going to kick things off with the. Crossman Power Master, three pumps, and let's put one right in there. I got way down close, and you probably can't see this, but right there is just the tiniest little dimple. So that's three pumps. Next, let's take this up to five pumps. If I miscount, I'm counting on all of you guys to make fun of me. This may be difficult to see, but here's the hit on power level five. There's five pumps. Might be able to see in the orange one, the, the orange lens down at the bottom, there's just this little divot toward the right side. All right, let's take this up to eight pumps. We 
We're starting to get into edgy territory. Eight pumps of the Crossman Pump Master. Let's see what we have. You can see on the orange lens, hopefully you can see this, right at the very top, just right there, there is, yeah, let's get this out there, tiny little dimple. They're getting bigger. Let's take this up to 10 and see what happens. And finally, maximum power, 10 pumps. All right, here's 10 pumps against the rose-colored lens. And it's just right there. Time to move up to something bigger. Something bigger. This one looks interesting. It looks like there's a dark spot, but I can't really see anything else. Very cool. There's a little crater there where it just melted its way through and then right into the bag. Oh, and it did actually crack right here, the weak point between the two lenses. Aside from that, no cracks. There's a little bit of dust around the edges of the crater there, but it just, it really is like it melted through. Let's kick it up another notch with a little extra hearing protection too. That looked like a pretty solid hit. Let's take a look. Now oh, we're missing one eye. And there it is. So there's the 22 hole right there. And here's another edge that I caught with the 357, or excuse me, the nine millimeter. Yep, yeah, like a hot knife through butter. So what can we take away from today's little experiment? First off, these are not bulletproof. Uh, you've probably seen a few videos on these already, but just in case, here's a reminder, they are not bulletproof. That 22 long rifle round, which is you know kind of what we consider the minimum uh, when we're out shooting with anything that actually has gunpowder, it's, uh, yeah, it's just gonna tear right through. Anything bigger, definitely. So these aren't gonna stop a direct shot on the lens, but uh, judging from how well they did with the BBs and those things just bouncing off, well these are good for BBs uh, and actually I did kind of need that today because uh, I'm glad I was wearing these. The uh, As I was taking the shots with the BBs at these lenses, the BBs were actually bouncing back and uh, hitting near me. And of course I've had some actually hit me before, they, they tend to bounce off any hard objects. But um, I feel pretty confident in these things that they would uh, actually deflect any little chunks of case that might be coming out of a semi-auto incorrectly. Maybe there's a case head separation or something. Uh, any debris coming back from a shot. Uh, I think that this would handle it pretty well. As long as the frames can actually hold them on your face. You suck, Browning.